Paul Bowden is an earthquake expert at the University of Washington and manager of the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network. He joins us from uh, Seattle. Uh, Paul, how prone is Taiwan to earthquakes? Taiwan is one of the most earthquake-prone areas in the world. Um, it, it sits at a very complicated plate boundary between uh, two major tectonic plates. Um, they're uh, moving quickly and in a very complicated pattern, and that gives rise to a lot of earthquakes. Well, having said that, the fact that only two people so far, based on what we know, have lost their lives, 200 others injured, uh, does that surprise you that more people have not died in this earthquake? Not really. Uh, Taiwan is one of the, the better prepared uh, countries for dealing with earthquakes, in part because they have so many, um, but they also have very good, uh, in general, building uh, codes and, and, and design criteria. Uh, moreover, this earthquake was not that large in terms of earthquakes that, that can happen there and have happened there. Uh, so this was a magnitude 6.5 earthquake, <clears throat> and the reason it caused as much damage as it did is that it was close to the city of Hualien. Uh, Paul, some of the buildings, uh, we've been looking at these pictures, some are tilting to one side, others completely crumpled to the ground. I know you're not an engineer, you're a geologist, but based on the damage and how different they are with e from one structure to another, does that tell you anything about these structures? Well, those structures, uh, the damaged and, and destroyed structures, will be examined by engineers who will figure out exactly what happened and went wrong with them. Um, and it, the, uh, um, the shaking that buildings experience uh, depends a lot on, on a lot of different factors, like the shallow structure of the rocks beneath the buildings themselves. There, there's a lot of complicated factors that determine uh, damage levels. Um, and, and, and an earthquake like this, it's sad to say, will teach us a lot about uh, what to expect in future earthquakes. And talk to us about the depth of this earthquake. This was a shallow earthquake, so the more shallow the quake, the more destructive. Certainly a shallow earthquake close to the city um, is going to cause very strong shaking in the city and, and will be very destructive. In Taiwan, there's a variety of earthquake faults uh, and earthquake depths, therefore. And um, yeah, deeper earthquakes are farther from their buildings and they're just uh, protected by a little bit more rock between the earth earthquake source and the building. And how likely, so, oh, yeah. go ahead, I'm sorry, I apologize. Go ahead, Paul, finish your thought. N no, I, I was just going to say that, that, that a shallow earthquake generally tends to cause uh, much stronger ground shaking, but very close to the source. Uh, a deeper earthquake will cause uh, less strong shaking for its size, but it'll be spread out over a bigger area. And should people expect aftershocks? I mean, there, it seems like already there has been a number of them. Yes, uh, that's a very important point. Um, in fact, Tuesday night's earthquake was preceded on Sunday night by a magnitude 6.1 earthquake in about the same place. Um, and sin in between then, there have been a lot of uh, smaller earthquakes, but not so small, magnitude fives and, and, and greater even. Um, this could continue. One, one point I'd like to make is that uh, in 1951, um, the, there was a series of very large earthquakes uh, that broke faults in what's called the Longitudinal Valley, uh, w w where the city of Hualien is. Um, the earthquake on Tuesday night was just at the very northern tip of that valley. Um, and uh, it's possible that uh, we could see more strong shaking so I think an important message is that, you know, more, more strong earthquakes over a period of time. In 1951, there was a, a couple of weeks of, of earthquakes. Um, so people should be prepared okay. for uh, sh shaking. Understood. Paul Bowden, thank you so much.